in this series of videos, we're covering uh, steps to build an app similar to Brick Breaker. And we're, in this video, we're going to talk about ball movement and how that works within our basic setup. All right, so we have this block to set the ball at the top of the paddle. And now we can drag the paddle around. The ball doesn't move with the paddle now that we're dragging it around but the ball should be launched as soon as the user taps the screen, as it says in the instructions. So if we have it enabled, the ball will start moving right away. So we want to disable that to start and enable it in our blocks. And ball movement is based on a clock. Right? We've covered similar clock movements in others and clocks basically go off every certain number of milliseconds and then perform their action. A ball's clock and a sprite, other sprite types clock, simply goes off to move the sprite or the ball in this case at a certain speed or a certain number of pixels and a heading. Right, so our heading is zero is straight up and down, right? Straight north essentially towards the top of the canvas, right? And then our speed is the number of pixels we want to move at that interval. And our interval is in milliseconds, right? Now, so we're doing every 10 milliseconds, we will move the ball five pixels. Okay, so in order to get a smooth looking animation, you want to average about 50, 25 to 60, let's say, frames per second, which means the clock or the interval should be 1,000 divided by 25 or 1,000 divided by 60. Right, so if we want something to occur 60 times, we take the 1,000 milliseconds and divide it over 60. Uh, in this case, I've set it a little low, so this will actually occur 100 times per second, okay? But we've disabled it, right? We unchecked enabled, and so now the ball won't move at all until we tell it to, okay? So in order to start the ball's movement, we're gonna use the screen, tap event or the canvas touched event right as we say in the instructions and we don't care about touching the sprite we're just touching somewhere on the canvas and we're going to launch the ball all right so that means that we're going to set the balls enabled property to true all right so we grab the enabled property and we'll set it to true. So now the ball should start moving. Great. But it's moving straight up. And we may want the ball to move in a certain direction. So given that our touched event provides an X and a Y, we can actually have the ball move towards wherever the user touched. So we're going to point it in a direction, give it an X, Y. Right? So we want to enable it, and then we're going to point it in a direction. So all that takes is what direction, and a point is composed of an X and a Y, and that's what we get from our touched event. So now our ball will be moving towards where the user tapped on the canvas. And that's how we start our ball's movement. 